In this video I am going to show you some advanced use of Audacity. If you already know how to record or apply basic effects like noise reduction, then this video is for you. Things I will cover in this video are, how to see editing history in Audacity. How to use label tracks effectively to edit audio. How to make multiple tracks from a single track, and how to make a single track from multiple tracks. I will also discuss the gain slider, and at the end, I will give you an exercise to make your audio editing skill better. So let's first start with editing history. Editing history is very useful, especially when you have to do a lot of edits. Also it saves you from the confusion, if you have done a particular editing or not. You will get history from view, then history. Here you will see all the actions you have taken in the current editing session. I will explain about editing sessions a bit later. Here we see that I have imported the audio. Let's edit something and see how it becomes. I will apply the noise reduction first. I select some noise sample. Then go to Effect, Noise Reduction. First step will be Get Noise Profile. I select the whole audio and go to Effect, Noise Reduction again. I am OK with the settings and click OK in step 2. Now noise reduction is done and let's visit history. You can see noise reduction here as applied effect. So the last item in the history will be the latest change we make in the audio. Let's edit more to get a better idea. I will select and delete some part from the beginning. Also delete some part from the end. Let's copy this part of the audio. And let's paste here the copied part. I have done few edits and let's view the history. We see the pasted from the clipboard is the last action, and those deletes are before that. You can visit the history at any point by clicking the action. I selected this delete action and now the paste action is gone from the timeline. If I go to the, the delete action before that, the next delete and paste action is reversed as those are grayed out. You can again go back to those points by just clicking on that. You now see the pasted part is back as I have selected the action from the list. Now let's see what happens if I go back to an earlier point and make some edits. I will go back to the noise reduction action and click OK. Now the timeline is just with the noise reduction applied. I visit the history again and we see actions after noise reductions are still there and grayed out. As those are still there, I can get back to any of those points. Now I will apply Normalize effect to the whole track. Go to Effect, Normalize. I am OK with the settings, so I apply this. Normalization done and let's visit the history. You can see Normalize is the last effect and before that the noise reduction. Those delete and paste actions are gone. So if you go back to an older action in history and make some changes, the later actions will be gone. As this history is linear, be careful if you go back to a previous point in history and make some changes. Also this history is available only from the current session. If you close Audacity and open the project again, history will not be saved. I will now save this project. Let's give it a name, Editing History. Just to be sure history is still there, I check the history. Normalize and noise reduction is there. I close the project. From recent projects, let's open the editing history. Now you see those actions are gone from history. So editing history will only work for current editing session. If you close Audacity then history will start from scratch. Now we will see the use of label track. You will get the label track on tracks, add new, and then label track. A label track has been added below the audio track. Label track has no audio in it and it's empty. You can add notes or labels through this label track. To add a label, click a point on the label track where you want to add the label and start typing. I had added this label by selecting a point in the label track. Another way to add label from an audio track is to click a point in the audio track. 
Then go to Edit, Labels, and then add Label at Selection. You will also see the keyboard shortcut to do this, Command B for Mac. Now a label is added, and you can start typing the label. Label is a great way to remind yourself later what kind of editing you thought as you skim through the audio. Besides the point label, there is another kind of label, region label. For region label, select a region from the track. Then the same label adding procedure. As I have selected a region this time, a region label has been added. Sometimes you may face an issue to add a label just by typing at the point in the label track. You have to check if the type to create a label is on or off here. A tick mark implies this settings is on. Now let's edit some audio where the labels are and see how it goes. I have added a point to delete this. Select this region. And delete. We have a problem here, as I deleted those region, the rest of the labels are not in place where I had added those. Notice the copy here label, it was in a blank point, now shifted. I undo the delete, command Z or control Z, and you see the original position of the copy here label. As soon as I delete something before this, the label is no longer in place. There are two kinds of solutions to this problem. One is to start editing from end. So you will start with the last label and move to the previous one. In this way all the labels before those edits will be in the right place. Editing from the end may not feel intuitive for many, so there is another solution. If you add something or remove something from the audio track, then make those adjustments in the label track also. Let me show you what I meant by that. I want to delete or cut this beginning part. When I make the selection, I will also select the label track. If you drag to the label track while selecting the region, both tracks will be selected. I can now remove this selected part. For some reason the delete button on the keyboard is not working for me when I select both the audio track and label track. So I will go to edit and I can delete from here. Also cut will do the same trick. The issue of removing something from track also happens if you add something to the track. Let's select this part and copy with Command C or Control C. Then I go to copy here label point in the audio track and paste. Now you see, the normalize this label has gone out of place. Let's undo the copy. While making the selection for copy, select both the audio and label track. Then click the point on the track and Command click on the label track. On Windows Control click. Then paste the copied part. This way the next label points will be in the place where you had put it. While doing this copy-paste thing, remember one point. When you paste the copied audio, first click on the audio track then command click on label track. If you first click on label track and then command click on audio track, Audacity will not be able to paste. When you are done with a label, you can delete the label texts, and that label will be removed. For regions label, you can drag to increase or decrease the region. So after adding a region label, you can adjust if you need to. Now we will learn how to make multiple tracks from a single track, and how to combine multiple tracks to one track. To create a new track from the existing track, select the part you want to be the new track. After selecting, go to Edit, Clip Boundaries, and then Split New. You can see from the selection a new track has been created below. The new track started from the point I have split. To take the new track to start of the timeline, go to Tracks, then Align Tracks. Here you will see different align options, select Start to Zero. New track now starts from zero second. Let's make another track from the end. I will follow the same process. Select the track, and from clip boundaries split new. For the last split, we saw how to take to the start of the timeline. Let's see how to take this to a random point. First click the start point on the track. 
Then go to Tracks, Align Tracks, and then start to Cursor Selection Start. Now the track has started from that point where the cursor was. When you are done with separating the tracks, you can export those. Notice one thing, all the tracks have the same name. You can rename those tracks, so during export you get separate names. Now I go to File Export. I will choose Export Multiple. Here options are, Split Files Based on Tracks, and File Names will be based on track name. Click OK and you get the option to add metadata for every track. You can see the track title is based on the track name I set in Audacity. At the end you see the message of successful export and where those are saved. When you are working with multiple tracks and start playing a track, it will start playing all the tracks combined. To play only one track and mute others, use the solo button on the track information. You see the rest of the tracks are grayed out. Also the mute button on those tracks are in pressed position. These solo and mute buttons are toggle buttons. So clicking solo again will unmute the rest of the tracks. To mute a particular track, use the mute button on the track. Now we will see how to make one track from multiple tracks. First, let's make this track 3 to start from 0 in timeline. Now drag through the tracks which you want to combine. For me all the three tracks, so I drag through all of them. Now go to tracks, mix. You have two options here mix and render, and mix and render to new track. Mix and render will combine all those tracks and make a single track. You see all three tracks are merged to only one track here. Undo and go to tracks, mix again. This time, I will select Mix and Render to new track. You see a new track is formed at the bottom and other tracks are also there as it is. New track has got the name, Mix. Now let's learn a bit about the Gain slider. I will cross out some of the tracks to get just a clear area. In the Track Information box, you can see a Gain slider after the Mute and Solo button. By default the Gain slider is in 0 dB. If you need an increased volume during editing you can slide right to have some gain. If the volume of the original recording is high you can also adjust the gain slider to decrease volume. Remember to set the gain slider to 0 dB during export. Also gain slider should not be used to increase volume in final production. To adjust volume you should use the normalize effect. Normalize adjust peak volume to a certain level whereas gain slider increase volume with the same amount all over the audio. If your audio has a more loud sound than other part, it will be too loud than the others with gain slider. Now an exercise for you. I have got two tracks here, sample 1 and sample 2. Let's hear what is in those tracks. 10, 9, 7, 1. 2, 6, 4, 8, 3, 5. So it is counting of 1 to 10 in two tracks, but in the wrong order. You have to make one track in the correct order of counting. You will get these sample files in the description as Google Drive link. Please comment how you solve this, there are several ways and let's see what is your preferable way. Please support me through Patreon if you like my tutorials. Your support will encourage me to put the time and effort to make this kind of video. Also I have created a complete WordPress dashboard tutorial, which is available through becoming my patron. WordPress is the most popular CMS and almost 40% on the websites are built in it. If you are interested you can do the WordPress course, or you can forward to someone who is interested. Thanks for watching this video. We'll see you soon.